teachers, we're getting into lesson 21 and it's another super exciting lesson because we have more guest teachers. Uh, today we have Lindsay and we also have Evan. So they are going to get into lesson 21. They're going to tell you what our learning target is. What are we working on in lesson 21, guys? Well, we are working on it's very big. Put it in your own put it in your own words. Okay, well, it's taking <laughs> products and Got it. Product is what? An answer to what type of math problem? Got it. Okay. And it's taking it and it's, we're trying to use a frac, re, relate fraction and decimal equivalents to multiplying the fraction by one. So it kind of sounds like we're still um, jumping between decimal and fraction land. Yeah. And then we're yeah. going to be doing some modeling. Yeah. And it looks like you guys were working on some word problems. Uh-huh. I know you guys love word problems, so... Uh, I hate to delay this any longer. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Let's go. Let's just think about really what we're doing in this lesson. So what we're doing essentially is we're converting our fractions. What we want to be doing is converting our fractions into decimals. And the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to be multiplying a fraction by one or some version of one. You guys know that three thirds is just a fancy way to say one whole. You guys also know when we multiply anything by one, we get that anything, okay? So if we were to multiply one fourth by one, or in this case, three thirds, another version of one, we're going to get three twelfths. Three twelfths and one fourth do not have, obviously have different digits, but three twelfths and one fourth, uh, one fourth are equivalent fractions. So here what we're doing is we're generating equivalent fractions by just multiplying our fraction by a whole number one. Here we have to be a little, a little bit more thoughtful though. We're multiplying three fourths by a whole number one, but it's not, <clears throat> this version of a whole number one, it's a fraction version. So we have to think, hmm, four times what number equals 28? Also, three times what number equals 21? Keep in mind that the numerator and the denominator need to be the same because when we have uh, the same number on the top and on the bottom, it's just whole number one. So I know Hmm, four times something is 28, three times something is 21. Well, I know three times seven is 21, and I know four times seven is 28. Three times seven, 21, four times seven, 28. Great, seven over seven is one, beautiful. Now let, let's look at this one. Seven fourths times one equals, so what we're trying to, what we're trying to do is fill in the missing pieces here. We've already generated the equivalent fraction to seven fourths, it's 35 twentieths. But we need to figure out what version of whole number one, what version of whole number one did we multiply seven fourths by in order to transform it into an equivalent fraction of 35 twentieths? Well, just have to think about, think about this. Seven times what number equals 35? Four times what number equals 20? Those numbers have to be the same. Well, thank you, Kyle. Four times five, we missed you today, by the way, but four times five is 20, and seven times five is 35. So we have another equivalent fraction. Beautiful. Um, let's go ahead and check these out. I have to go through these steps. We are going to be doing some more um, fractions to equivalent decimals. So let's check this out. It's really interesting work here. I like it. So first of all, let's just multiply. So we have 1 times 25. You guys know that's 25. And then we have 4 times 25, which is 100. We want to convert this fraction into a decimal. Just think about 25 hundredths. What does that look like on the place value chart? Well, it looks like that, 25 hundredths. 25 over 100 is equal to 0.25. Okay, cool, let's look at this one. 3 fourths times 25 twenty fifths. By the way, you guys know that that's just a fancier version for whole number one. 
you guys know 25 25ths is just a fancy version for whole number one. So what we're doing here still is just multiplying a fraction by a different version of whole number one to generate not only an equivalent fraction, but an equivalent decimal. So essentially we found that 0.25 uh, is equal to 1 fourth, which makes a lot of sense because think about quarters. 25 cents is equal to 1 fourth of a dollar. Pretty cool. Okay, let's look here. 3 times 25, let's just do our multiplication. 3 times 25 is 75. Thank you, Arwen. And then 4 times 25 is 100. Cool. Let's think about what 75 over 100 looks like as a fraction. You guys know how to pronounce, how to just say this number at 75 hundredths looks like this in decimal form and this in fraction form. This makes a lot of sense again. 3 fourths is equal to 75 cents. If I had 3 quarters, I would have 75 cents. Here's where things <coughs> get a little bit more tricky. We're going to have to keep in mind our powers of 10. 10, 100, 1,000. Remember powers of 10, um, 10, 100,000, we work with them on our place value chart. We also remember that video that we watched in the very beginning of the school year or we zoomed out into space and then we zoomed in into a skin cell, looking at powers of 10, how they dramatically increase or decrease um, as we just multiply by 10 or divide by 10. Pretty cool stuff. Anyway, um, so we're trying to find an equivalent fraction for one-fifth, and then we're going to look at it as a decimal. So we're going to multiply one-fifth by some fancy version of one, what we want, though, is for our answer, our denominator, to be a multiple of 10 or a power of 10. We can choose 10, 100, or 1,000. Let's just keep life simple and choose 10 for now. So let's think. Hmm, 5 times some number is 10. Well, you guys are too clever for that. 5 times 2 is 10. And if this fraction is going to be a fancy form of whole number 1, you know that has to be the same number on the top and the bottom, two halves. One fifth times two halves is equal to what over 10? Well, it's just one times two, two over 10. If we wanna write that in fraction, I'm sorry, in decimal form, it just looks like that. Two tenths, two tenths, big whoop. Okay, I think what you guys are ready to take it up a notch. Let's look at this, F, 27 twentieths. We're going to multiply 27 twentieths by some fancy version of whole number one to find an equivalent fraction and then we're going to ch change that equivalent fraction into some fancy decimal. Okay, so I want the denominator in my equivalent fraction to be a power of 10 so that we can then transform it very easily into a decimal. So let's think about it. 20 times what number? Let's choose 100. 20 times what number equals 100? How many 20s do I need to make 100? Hmm. You can count on your fingers if you'd like. I think a lot of you by this time know that 20 times 5 is 100 because 2 times 5 is 10 with another 0. If we're going to have a fancy version of whole number 1, my whole number one does not look very fancy there. It needs to be, um, this fraction needs to be equivalent to one, which is five fifths, okay? So 20 times five is 100. 27 times five, mm, not quite sure, so I'm just gonna do some casual multiplication up here. Seven times five is 35, thank you, Zara. Two times five is 10 plus three, thank you, Chloe, is 13. So we have 135 hundredths. 135 hundredths is equivalent to 27 over 20 because all we did was just multiply 27 by, I'm sorry, 27 twentieths by one. You guys know if we multiply anything by one, we have the same value. The digits have changed because we didn't multiply it just straight, um, we didn't multiply 27 twentieths by straight number one. We did a fancy version of number one, five fifths. So now 135 Hundreds. Let's think about what that looks like as a decimal. We can just throw that onto a made from scratch place value chart. 
So we have 135, I'm sorry, yeah, 135 hundredths. Keep in mind, wherever the last digit falls, you can dictate that as, <coughs> uh, we can re, I'm sorry, I want to reword that. We can rename this number wherever by wherever our last digit falls. So this place value you guys know as hundredths. We have tenths, hundredths. So here we have 135 hundredths or one and 35 hundredths. I'm sorry, yeah, one and 35 hundredths. Let me try to get back over here. So we have 1.35. 27 twentieths is equal to 1.35, which makes sense because the numerator is larger than the denominator. This is what we call an improper fraction. Claire, thank you for joining me in the accent. So that makes sense with our decimal. Our decimal is larger than one. These fractions here are smaller than one. Our numerator is smaller than the denominator, so our fraction is not quite one. Here, our numerator is much less than, than the denominator, so our fraction is, is not even close to one. It's, it's a very small number. Here, numerator smaller than the denominator, and then again, our decimal is not is, is a tiny, tiny decimal. But here we had an improper fraction, I'm sorry, an improper fraction, so our final number was a whole and then some. Cool? So this is what, we, what we'll be doing, working on tomorrow, and uh, Lindsay and Evan now are going to do some practice with this. Uh, Talking, but... Okay, <clears throat> we're going to do some word problems in lesson 21. And so our first word problem is going to be with Jack. Number three. Yeah, it's going to be with Jack. This guy. So Jack said that if you take a number and multiply it by a fraction, the product will always be smaller than what you started with. Is he correct? Why not? Explain your answer and give at least two examples. So we're going to need to give at least two examples. Two. So just remember that. All right, we're going to start off with fourths. So we're going to do fourths times one just to see if it'll be smaller. Because our learning target says that we have to use one. Because our learning target is to explain the size of the product and relating fraction and decimals. It's very weird. To multiply a fraction by one. Yeah, which, of course, Miss C explained for us. All right, so we're going to do four times five. Over. Because one is equivalent to five fifths. Yeah, we know it. So, yeah, this is equivalent to 1. That's good. So, we're going to do 4 times 5, which equals 20. Let me know that. And 5 times 5, which equals 25. Now, 20 20 fifths can be converted back to 4 fifths. That doesn't mean it's larger or smaller. So, we can do that. But it's not larger or smaller. It's the same. The same. That's just how it is. So now we're going to go ahead and do our second one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do six tenths. So big, I know, so big. Times one. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing that we just did. So six tenths times one, we'll just do six. And let's go ahead and convert that one into ten tenths. So six times ten and is going to be on the top over 10 times 10. And that's going to equal, well, 6 times 10 is 60, and 10 times 10 is 100. Oh, man, it seems these are the exact same. So Jack is wrong. Yeah, Jack, Jack, you're wrong. You're wrong. Because we can just convert it back to 6 tenths with some pretty easy division. All right. So. Yeah, so Jack is wrong. All right, are we done here? Yeah. Okay. Five. All right. So Elise has, let's see, Elise has three fourths of a dollar. Isn't a lie. So yeah, she doesn't have a lot of money. Let's go a little blue. Wait, actually, no. I want to do this because, you know, this is pretty awesome. Okay, uh, so Elise has 
three fourths of a dollar. How's, why is this not working? So Elise has three fourths of a dollar. She buys a stamp that costs 44 cents. Change both numbers into decimals and fractions. Hold on, let's, let's move this. At, change both numbers into decimals and tell how much money Elise is paying for the stamp. So we know that in one dollar there is is if one dollar is equal to one hundred cents. And if you divide one hundred by four, you get twenty five. So that's twenty five cents zero. per quarter. Whoa, why did I just do twenty five? Okay, <coughs> let's pretend that I didn't do that. Yes, I didn't. Okay, so that equals zero, not twenty five. And then, so if we do three times twenty five, because she has three fourths of a dollar, it equals seventy five cents. So Elise has seventy five cents. Let's clear this so I can do the next step of the problem. Closed it. Okay, whatever. Oh, you need thing. to press this up here. Oh, okay. The okay. struggle is real. So real. Okay, so Elise has first. 75. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so aggravating. So true. Alright. <coughs> Okay, so Elise has 75 cents, okay? So she buys a stamp that costs 44 cents. So 75 cents minus 44 cents is equal to 5 minus 4 is 1, 7 minus 4 is 3, so that's 31 cents. We got it right! But we have to change both numbers into decimals. So 75 cents is... 0 0.75 I like to give a shout out to Keshmatizer on Instagram he's awesome uh, and 44 cents is equal to 0 0.44 so Elise has 31 cents over after after she buys that stamp so Elise has 31 cents left over. Okay, that, that's pretty bad. But, you know, Elise has, has 31 cents. And that is how much she has after paying for the stamp. We'd also like to shout out Louie because, just because. <laughs> okay, and that is what we are going to do today okay I, I think we're done now thank you yeah can i do something thank you for watching this horrible thing And that is it for us today. Yay. Good thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.